The group of muscles we are going to discuss are called the suboccipitals. And this is a descriptive term. The occiput is the base of your skull and sub means underneath. So these muscles live underneath the base of your skull. They are deep muscles and they're a complex group of muscles as you can see here. The symptoms that they cause are an ill-defined headache. In Travell and Simons it's described as headache ghosts and that's a lovely name because the headache arises somewhere inside your skull. You can't precisely locate it and for most people uh, it's maybe somewhere in the middle but may radiate forward to behind your eyes. It can be unilateral or it can be bilateral. The commonest way these headaches are described is as a tension headache. So tension headaches are amongst the most common symptoms that we have as, as human beings. Trigger points are amongst the commonest cause of these kinds of headaches. Um, Suboccipital muscles form part of this cause. We live in an, in an increasingly complex and stressful world and as in trying to cope with the uh, with our world with our, our environment um, you often hold the tension in different parts of your body or manifest the tension in different ways just like uh, ulcers irritable bowel syndrome hypertension heart attacks and so on one of the commonest ways and the, one of the commonest places that people manifest this tension is headaches. And these headaches are termed tension headaches, which uh, is self-explanatory. The trigger points are a pretty potent and common cause of tension headaches. And these trigger points occur in the neck and in the shoulders. We'll go over a number of the muscles and the trigger points that add to these headaches. Suboccipitals are one of that group. What's special about these muscles is that you don't feel the pain where the muscle is at all. They're very deep and their pain is manifested purely inside your head. Other important causes which would turn on trigger points in these muscles are a whiplash type injury or suboptimal posture the very common situation where people slump forward their chin juts forward and, and they shorten their neck this puts excess tension on the suboccipital muscles which turns on trigger points the anatomy of these muscles is quite complex. There are four muscles on each side and you can divide them into two groups and this, this is what their name suggests. There are, there's this muscle and that muscle. These are the rectus capitis posterior major and minor. Now as with all names the these are Latin names which are descriptive purely. Rectus means a straight muscle. Capitus is the head and posterior is in the back. So these are two muscles which are straight in the back of the head and there's one bigger, that's the major, and there's one smaller, that's the minor. And the bigger muscle arises from the posterior spine of C2. The smaller muscle arises from the tubercle because of C1. C1 doesn't have a posterior spine. It's an unusual vertebra. So that's the origin and they both run straight up. This one straight up is slightly to the side and insert into the inferior nuchal line and the nuchal line the, is, the, is a a line just along the base of the skull slightly above the foramen magnum which is the big hole that the spinal cord comes through. 
The second group of muscles are called the obliques because they run at an oblique angle. Having said that, the, the superior oblique is in fact a straight up and down muscle when you look at it from the back. But when you look at it from behind, you see that in fact it starts um, quite far back and it runs forward. And there is the obliquus capitus superior, again, so that's the oblique muscle of the head. That's the top one, and there's the obliquus capitus inferior. So complex muscles, they're small. They have two sets of functions. The first set is typical of all muscles. They move joints. So the uh, rectus muscles and the, the superior oblique muscle, when they contract, what they do is they pull the head backwards. And so that's one of their roles. And the second role is they stop the head from falling forward. The balance of your head on your neck is that more of the weight is in the front of your head. And therefore, if you had no muscles, your head would roll off forward and roll down the street. So these are part of the muscles that stop your head from falling forward. This is a check rein type um, activity. So they help with the balance of your head. The obliquus inferior muscle runs from the posterior spine of C2, that's its origin, and it inserts into the lateral process of C1. And this muscle is a rotator. When it contracts, it will rotate your head around and it is acting across C12 joint. Now the C12 joint is an unusual, unique joint in the whole spine. And it, the way it's set up is such that it t makes up 45% of the rotation of your head. So this muscle is actually a really important rotatory muscle. So that's the first group of functions of these muscles. The second group of function is very unusual and these suboccipitals share this particular function only with the rotator cuff muscles in the shoulder. And their primary function is what's called proprioceptive. So now what they do is that they sense, there are sensors, stretch receptors, and they give information to your brain of the position of your head in three-dimensional space. This is incredibly important because your head has all your five senses. It has your eyes, your ears, uh, your smell, and, and so on. And these senses are a huge part of how your brain perceives the world around you. And for you to perceive your world accurately, or as accurately as you can, you need to be able to direct these senses in, the, in whatever way your brain requires you to. So to do this, you, you, you need to have a sense of where your head is in three-dimensional space. The suboccipital muscles are part of the mechanisms that give you this information. Now we're going to look at the trigger points and at their pain distribution. There are four trigger points in that arise in the suboccipital muscles. If you look, if you feel your neck, what you'll feel is that there is a, a line in the middle of your, of your uh, neck. Uh, there's a, a, a bulge of muscle, which are your erector spiny. Then there is a groove between it. And then there's a second layer of uh, muscle which is raised up and the three triggers appear firstly the most lateral trigger which sits over the lateral 
process of C1 and just under the nuchal ridge, this trigger is actually in the lateral mass of muscle. The second trigger sits in between in the groove as does the one below it. So these are pretty close to each other and remembering that these are deep muscles and, and often you may not feel the trigger itself but pressure on the area will certainly cause tenderness locally and may set off the pain, the typical pain that you feel inside your head. And the third trigger lies just underneath the nuchal ridge again and it lies in that medial lateral mass of muscle which is the medial erector spiny muscle. The typical pain distribution is shown here and it is as I said before this amorphous deep ghost-like headache radiating often to the back of your eye and remember also this headache may have associated with it this feeling of disequilibrium, nausea and can be quite disabling.